Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to this Spotfire tutorial brought to you by Datafuel. My name is Kyle Lamada, and today I'll be showing you how to set up property controls to quickly flip between multiple date scales on the x-axis of a chart. Notice how changing this dropdown updates all of the charts on the page with the selected time scale. Let me open the starting file, I'll define the problem, and then I'll show you the steps to get to this end result. In the data visualization practice of time series analysis, data points are plotted against dates or times on the x-axis to show trends over time. Sometimes it's useful to show absolute dates, for example, the year and month, and other times it's more appropriate to graph with a normalized scale where all data points start at time zero, regardless of the actual point in time. In this example, we have monthly oil and gas production data for nine different wells, and each well starts producing on a different day. The top charts show monthly oil and gas production with one line for each well, and the bottom bar charts are summing up production for all nine wells. This data has two date scales, monthly, such as January, February, March, etc., and normalized, such as the first, second, and third month of production. The challenge in Spotfire is to quickly flip between these two different timescales. If there are multiple charts on the page that you want to update, you either end up changing them one by one, which is time consuming, or having two or more pages with one page dedicated to each time scale, which is just repetitive. The way to get around this is to use property controls, as I just showed a minute ago, to let you select which date scale to use on all of the charts. I'll start by duplicating and then renaming the active page. We can control the axis of all charts through one property control, which I'll add by editing this text area and then inserting a drop down list property control below the user controls section. Create a new property control with the name of p.dateSelector or something similar. The values in this dropdown will be selected from the existing columns in our data table, so we need to create a new column property, which I'll name cp.dateColumns. Type false for the default value, which ensures that this column property will not have any new columns automatically added to it. If you type true, then any new columns inserted into the data table will automatically be added into this column property. And then select the two date columns, date and date normalized. Click OK a few times to finish adding this property control. And then save and close the text area. And now we can check this dropdown to see if both of the columns that we just added populated correctly. Now we can assign this property control to the x-axis by right-clicking on the axis selector and editing the custom expression. Delete the existing expression and then find the property control that we just created and insert it into the expression editor. The main trick here is to force this axis to be categorical. You can do this by wrapping the property in angle brackets like this. Now click OK to close the expression editor, and we can test out the new property control. After assigning the property control to this axis, we can quickly change the date column by using this dropdown. Now at this point, there's two things that I want to point out. First, the names of the columns used in this property cannot contain spaces. To show what happens if there's a space, I'll edit column properties, rename the date column, Click OK, and notice how we now get an error in this chart. So just make sure that there's no spaces in your column names. And second, you might have noticed that the date column is displaying differently with the property control. We no longer have the nice organization of years and months. If we take a look at the custom expression for one of the other charts, notice how it's using this bin by date time function. In order to make the access with our property control look like this, we'll have to incorporate the same syntax into our property control. Since we're going to use this same expression, I'll go ahead and copy it here, and then we're going to go back into our text editor and add a new property control. To do this, right click and edit the text area, and then add a new drop down property control with the name of p.dateSelector2.
This time, we're going to set the property control through expressions instead of column names. The first column contains the display name, which should be date and normalized date. For normalized date, I'll edit the expression and simply insert the date normalized column from our data table. For the date, this is where we're going to use the expression that we just copied from the previous visualization. So I'll just paste that into this expression window and then click OK. Now when this date value is selected from the dropdown, it will use this bin by date time function on the x-axis. Click OK to close out of the property controls and then save and close the text area. Now we can go back to that first chart and edit the expression by right clicking on the x-axis, edit the custom expression, and insert the new property control. Notice how this time we have that year month organization for our date column, just like the other visualizations. To control all four charts with just this one property control, we can edit the expressions for the other charts, but this time just click the insert button next to the recent expression. This will paste the last formula into the expression editor, which will save you a little bit of time. Click OK to close that. And now I'll just quickly update these bottom two charts by inserting the property using the recent expressions in the same way. And now you can see when we change the drop down selection in our property control, it's going to update the x axis for all of the charts at once. So at this point, we can quickly flip between our two dates, date and normalize date, and update all of the charts at once, which will save us time when setting up this Spotfire project, but it also makes it a lot more user friendly and intuitive. And that's it. Now you know how to create property controls, add columns and expressions in the property, and then use that property to control the x-axis of multiple charts simultaneously. To download the Spotfire file shown in this demo, don't forget to visit the blog post linked in the notes below. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel so you're alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching and have a great day.